Now that you've identified the promise of your own genre, let's take a look at some of the key story elements of all genres that will tend to show up in Act 2, Part 1. If the hero or heroine's allies haven't shown up already in Act 1, they will be introduced in Act 2, Part 1. Allies are the friends, relatives, colleagues, or experts who will help the hero or heroine get their desire. And in good stories, the allies are also working toward desires of their own. In action stories, spy stories, and caper stories, there's often a whole sequence of assembling the team. The heroine has a task, and they need a whole team of specialists to get it done. One of the pleasures of a sequence like this is that you get to see some highly skilled pros in top form. Or they're a bunch of unlikely losers that you root for because they're so pathetic. But even if you're not writing an overtly team specialist action story, there is very often a sequence of assembling the team. And this really tends to come in the last part of the first act or the first part of the second act. The classic example is in The Wizard of Oz when Dorothy meets first the Scarecrow and then the Tin Man and then the Cowardly Lion assembling the team. Because this is just like life. When we have a strong life-changing desire, we tend to call on our friends or relatives or colleagues for help. Or, if we declare our intention to the universe, then previously unknown allies will often show up to help. Now, if you've already assembled the team in Act 1, as we saw in Selma, then in Act 2, Part 1, we're going to see scenes of bonding with allies, or love scenes, or both. This is one of the great pleasures of any story, in any genre seeing the hero or heroine make lifelong friends or fall in love. Love scenes can certainly be romantic, but they can also be between a boy and his dragon in How to Train Your Dragon, or between teammates, as in Harry Potter and in Jaws, or between a man and his father, or a woman and her mother, and on and on. Bonding scenes between allies often happen during the training sequence. In darker stories, though, we may see the hero or heroine pulling away from people and away from allies. Instead of bonding, they become more and more alienated, and we see that in The Godfather and The Shining and Casino and, of course, Taxi Driver. And in a love story, there's always a specific scene that you could call the dance. Here's where we see that the lovers, no matter how they're fighting, are really perfect for each other. It can be a very witty exchange of dialogue. It can be some horrible karaoke that they're forced to sing. It can also happen in action, like a shootout. You see this dance scene in buddy comedies and action movies, too. There's a great example of it in Jaws between Sheriff Brody and Matt Hooper. Any love subplot in any genre can benefit from this scene. So the next few movies you watch make a point of looking for the hero or heroine's team, and you'll start to see this important element in action. There's also often a training sequence in Act 2, Part 1. In a mentor story, this is a pretty obligatory sequence. You see classic examples in The Karate Kid and The Matrix, the training sequence that introduces Yoda in The Empire Strikes Back, and of course, Baby's dance training in Dirty Dancing. You'll often see a series of tests designed by the mentor. And even if there's not a mentor character putting the protagonist through tests, then you'll see the antagonist throwing tests at the main character. Another inevitable element of the training sequence is plants and payoffs. For example, 
we learn that the hero or heroine or another member of the team has a certain weakness in battle. And of course, that weakness will have to be tested in the final battle. The training sequence can also involve a gathering the tools or gadgets or weapons scene. And in a love story or romantic comedy, the training sequence is often a shopping sequence or a makeover sequence. And I'd also like to point out that if you have an assembling the team sequence and a training sequence in the second quarter of your story, then you're already halfway through. Also in Act 2, Part 1, there will be attacks on the hero or heroine by the opponent or forces of opposition. These might start subtly and then start increasing in danger. Now, that's pretty obvious in thrillers and crime stories, but every story is going to have opposition throughout the story. Also throughout your story, your main character is going to have to shift and change and adjust their plan. It's just human nature to use minimal effort to try to get what you want, and if that doesn't work, then you start to work harder. So the hero or heroine has to escalate the plan. Now, we've already discussed that in a detective story or a mystery, there's going to be a specific sequence of investigation. But many stories that are not mysteries or thrillers still use elements of a classic mystery plot. The comedy The Hangover and also the Harry Potter books and films both follow a classic mystery plot. I would actually go as far as to say that most stories have an element of investigation, even if it's just following the love interest around or researching a haunted house. Also, in the second act of many genres, you might be setting a ticking clock. A ticking clock is a suspense technique that sets a limit of time on the action. In Silence the Lambs, Buffalo Bill holds his victims for three days before he kills them. And in the proposal, Margaret and Andrew have three days to learn everything about each other before their immigration test. You'll also want to be working the dynamic of hope and fear. We want to know what to want for the character and what to fear for them. And here's one of the most important things I can tell you about Act 2, Part 1. In the first half of most stories, the hero or heroine is winning. There are lots of exceptions, absolutely. But in most stories, you see the hero or heroine gaining ground in Act 2, Part 1. And then something happens at the midpoint that changes everything. And from there, things tend to go downhill very quickly. And suddenly in act two, part two, the hero or heroine starts to lose and lose big. Now you absolutely don't have to structure your own story that way, but it's a really interesting thing to keep in mind when you confront that long and terrifying act two. And the midpoint is such an important element for all stories that I'm going to do a separate video on it.